In this tutorial, we're going to create a custom burp suite extension using Python. So I'm first going to create the simplest possible burp suite extension. I'll go over the API and what the classes are, how to find out how they work, what methods are available, uh, as well as where to find some example extensions that you might want to modify or use as inspiration for your own code. And then we're going to extend our own custom extension to something, if not practical, at least a bit more believable in terms of the things you might do with it. Uh, we're going to modify our responses on the fly to recreate one of my favorite browser plugins ever, cloud to butt and it's going to replace the word cloud with the word but everywhere online for you. Super practical. So if you've found yourself here, you probably are familiar with Burp Suite, but extremely briefly, just to set our bases here, Burp Suite is a web proxy, so I can use it to inspect and um, modify my own web traffic. So just as a very quick example, if I go, let's say to example.com, I can modify the response. So you can mess with uh, outbound requests or inbound responses. So if I forward that along, here is the response that's about to make its way to my browser. Let's give it some more emphasis. So if I forward that along, here we go. This is now what's appeared in my browser. So that was just a manual version of what we're going to do automatically with the extension now. Um, I will start with a caveat that we're writing Python kind of, as any sane adult would. I prefer Python over Java for nearly any task, but really we're writing Jython here. So Burp Suite is a Java-based program. Everything that we write in Python, Jython, is really going to become Java bytecode. So it might look a little odd. It's in some cases, you're even importing uh, from this Java standard library if you wanted uh, GUI elements like panels and things like that. So if you're already very familiar with Java and you don't have a specific reason to use Python, like you need to import a particular package or you just don't want to bang your head against the wall writing Java, um, go for it. You can stick with Java. Um, in this case, I'd rather not load up Eclipse. I'd rather program for a couple more days if necessary. So we're going to stick with Python. Uh, but you won't get uh, any sort of auto-completion uh, that you might in, in a big IDE where you're using Java and it's helping you along. Uh, however, it's pretty easy to find what would autocomplete if we go to this extender APIs tab. These are all of the classes and methods uh, available to us. So this is a, a quick reference within Burp Suite. Uh, you can also find this on the per Port Swigger website. Um, Port Swigger is the company that creates the product Burp Suite. So if I look for Port Swigger Extender API. This is a slightly more readable version of the same thing here. Now we're going to load our extension in here. I have this from before. We remove that, so we're starting fresh. We also have the B app, the BAP store. These are extensions that Port Swigger has already validated in some way. So we can search by popularity and see what some common extensions do. Uh, you can also find the code for all of those on the Port Swigger GitHub page. So if I go out to here, I can even choose Python. And this will show me all of the Python-based um, repositories that are mostly extensions for Burp Suite here that you can use for inspiration or copy-pasting. Uh, this won't show all of Port Swigger's simple example libraries because those are all available in Java, Python, and Ruby, all the three possible options. And because Java is very verbose, it will think, GitHub will think that they're all in Java. But if I just search for example without selecting a language, you could see that uh, this one is in Java, Python, and Ruby. So these are some really great ways if you need a specific example of how to do a certain thing with a certain tool to go ahead and get a, a head start that way. All right, let's get into writing the simplest possible burp extension. So the first thing we're going to do is import iBurp extender. So everything that starts with an I, these are interfaces that we're going to be 
uh, implementing. And you'll see a lot of common code here across any extension. So in this case, we have to have a class burp extender that implements this iBurp extender interface. And within that, we need uh, a method called register extender callbacks. So these callbacks will allow burp suite to uh, plug back into our extension and know what to expect of us and tell us when something's happening so we can take action. So this right here is the simplest version. Uh, we'll call this test.py of an extension that I believe should work. It just won't do anything yet. Before we can load that up, we need to go to the options sub tab and you can see Java, Python, Ruby within Python environment. I need to point this at the Jython jar so that we have that Jython interpreter available to us. So to find that, if you look for Jython jar and go to the downloads page, you're looking for the standalone. So if I click this, this would download that jar file for me. You could place that wherever you want. Just point your Python environment at that jar file wherever it is, and then you have Jython available. So if we go back to our extensions, I'm going to add in the extension I just created. I'll choose Python and then go out and find that file. If I click next, this will load it in and check that uh, it compiles correctly. So I don't have any errors and I don't have any output and I don't really have anything, but it worked. So let's print some output just to uh, have sort of the hello version world of uh, hello world version of an extension. Um, I'm going to add a couple other things that we won't need just yet, but you'll also tend to see some version of this in, in um, any Python extensions. So there are a number of helper methods we're going to use, and we want to be able to reference those in other methods of our class. Uh, same with the callbacks. We just want to be able to easily reference those elsewhere. Um, so these are just a couple helper utilities for that. Uh, the first thing we'll want to do is set an extension name. So let's call this hello extension. While we're at it, let's print some output to that tab that we saw when we, we loaded it up. And let's send some output elsewhere as well. So we can use the callbacks to issue an alert on the event log of the, the dashboard. All right, that should be that easy unless I've made a mistake, and then we'll see some errors. I can click this twice to reload it, or I can command click or control click to reload that automatically. Um, our output, we now have that hello burp. Don't see any errors, great. If I go over to my dashboard, I see info from the extender. Thanks, scroll. Hello extensions says hello alerts, great. All right, let's do something more useful with that now. So we're going to use a, a few different uh, interfaces here. Um, we're in this case going to use the IHTTP listener. This will listen for any requests and any responses so that we can grab those when they happen and modify them. Um, you can get an idea of what else is available here. So there's very similarly iProxy listener that will just listen on that um, proxy tool. Um, in this case, if I go back and click on IHTTP listener, you'll see that it, it has this single process HTTP message that has an integer for what tool. So that means, is that coming from the intruder, the repeater, etc.? In this case, we don't care. Uh, it can come from any of those. Um, a Boolean for message is request. If it's not a request, it's a response. And this IHTTP request response, which returns some sort of message. So let's take a look at what that is. And this one has a number of methods on it as well, like get response we'll be using, and then set response once we've modified it. You'll see that a lot of these take or um, give a byte array. So this is another quirk of working in Java. Um, you have two options there. If you are running, say, a, a scan and you want to run hundreds or thousands of, of requests as quickly as possible, 
Um, you can work with that byte array directly. It might get a little hairy looking though. So the other option is you turn all of that into a string as quickly as possible. Um, work with the, the strings or lists in Python and then convert them back when you're ready to throw everything back to burp suite, which is not as efficient, but uh, a lot more readable. Um, while I'm here, we also have I extension helpers. That was that underscore helpers that I called out to and, and saved. I'm going to use a couple things like analyze response that will uh, return this response info object for us. Um, but you can get an idea again, you know, add parameter, a few other useful helper functions, build HTTP message, which we're going to use to put our response back together once we've modified it. All right. So if we want to implement this IHTTP listener, first we have to import it. Then we have to do two other things, and it's really important to get both of these. Uh, otherwise, your code won't error out. It just won't do any of the expected things because those triggers won't happen. So we've imported it. We have to implement the interface as part of our class. Uh, and then we also have to register it. So let's do that, say, here. Callbacks.register HTTP listener of self. So that now gives us the ability to create our version of process HTTP message that we're now going to implement. So that had that tool integer, which we don't really need. We don't care what, what tool it's coming from. Um, that message is a request boolean and some sort of content. So first thing we could do is say if it's a request, uh, if we wanted to modify just requests, uh, outbound, we would put our code in here. In this case, we just want to modify our responses. So we'll skip over the requests. Um, I'm going to create a helper method here. So this, you know, there's a lot of boilerplate uh, code when it comes to these extensions. And so I'm going to take uh, a little helper method that will pull out the information I need to get the headers and the body from that response, and then we can work with them. So let's write that first, and that will take in some sort of content. We get the response from that content. We saw that, that method on that uh, I whatever it was object. And then we need the actual data out of the response so we can use one of those helper methods, analyze response, to grab that. Now we can grab the headers and the body out of that object. So we're going to use get headers, and we're going to turn this into a list for Python to work with. And then for the body, what we actually want to do, because we have that, that byte array, we need to use get body offset. So what this does, this says essentially return the index value for that byte array where the body starts. We want to skip over the header and just grab the, that body and turn that into a string that we can work with. And then we're able to return the headers and body to work with. So you could probably even just copy this wholesale into other extensions if you wanted that specific functionality. If we were working with a request, um, you could probably guess without even looking it up. We'd have get request, analyze request, um, but otherwise pretty similar. So now that we've grabbed that, we can modify our body. We'll get to that. Um, but once we've done whatever changes we'd like on that response, we now need to build it back together. So let's create a new message using that uh, helpers build HTTP message with our headers and body. And then we give that message to the content so we can use set response with that new message. Um, this will modify it in place, so no need to return anything. We now have our, our new response. So we took apart our message into our header and body, and then we put it back together. 
So let's go ahead and, and change something about that body. Let's see here. We have domain. So let's change domain to something else. To interweb location. Great. And if I haven't made any mistakes here, this should be able to reload without errors. Hello burp, no errors. Great, so far so good. And now we'll reload this page and this interweb location is here for us. All right, so that's, that's about it when it comes to the extension, but for the fun of it, let's go ahead and finish this out for something a bit more entertaining. And this is not case sensitive. I could use regex, but why use regex when you can just repeat yourself? And that should do it. Great. Now let's go out and read the news. And hopefully our web experience will be greatly improved with this burp extension. There we go. AWS uses Metaverse-like game for butt training. What happened to performance engineering in my butt? All right, on that note, I think we'll call it a wrap. Hopefully this was of interest and use for everybody. Happy to um, create some additional extensions or answer questions about specifics of implementing uh, particular tools or classes. Um, again, those example extensions from Burp Suite uh, are, are a really great place to start for that other functionality as well. Uh, if you enjoyed this and want to see other tutorials or just see me hack some stuff entertainingly, please subscribe. Thank you so much.